Hello my friends. Welcome to Painting with Harold. And today we have our 16 by 20 canvas turned on landscape. Already covered with a thin even coat liquid white. And today we're just going to paint something kind of fun but simple. We're not going to do a real hard painting. Uh, in case you want to try it at home. Something kind of easy to give you something to do when you when you're sitting around bored. We're gonna take our two inch brush today, start out, and we're gonna go right into our phthalo blue. Just gonna get a little color on the brush, not a lot. We don't need a whole lot. We're not gonna do a real, real fancy sky today. We're just gonna do a little plain, simple. Thalo blue sky with a couple of small clouds here and there. Just something to put some color on the on the canvas. But even at that, we still want to remember to uh, when we get to our corners to keep our corners a little darker. We'll get that eye to wandering around to. Uh, Look for lighter spots and come to the center of the paint. And just leave yourself a few light spots when you're when you're doing this. And if they're showing up on the camera, you'll see them there of uh, just little light spots that kind of represent movement. We want to we want to have some kind of some kind of movement in our in our sky while we're while we're looking at it. We don't want a, just a solid solid blue sky that looks like you nailed up a board over you know just over a window. We just want something that's that's kind of dark and light and light and dark. Some real pretty. Something about like that. That's about all we need, really. Because as we move toward the horizon, we want it, we want it lighter down at the bottom. And we'll come in. Let's go back into our blue again. And we will, we'll come in from the sides. And we'll pull straight in. We'll fill this bottom in with phthalo blue as well, just in case we decide we want to add some water in this painting. Now you guys have already seen the thumbnail, and if you clicked on it, you know what this painting already looks like. At this point in this painting, I don't have a clue what this painting looks like. I just got an idea of what I want to do. Uh, so I don't know if it ended up with water in it or not. We may cover this up, who knows. But that's the beauty of this this style of painting and oil painting in general. You start out doing one thing, you end up doing something else. Oil paint is so forgiving. Not saying anything bad against acrylic because acrylic has its place. And so does watercolor. You guys that paint that watercolor, they, uh, they're pretty talented. And acrylic painters are talented too. They, there's some guys out there can do amazing stuff to the acrylic. All right, now once we've done that, we'll take us a dry paper towel. And we'll knock a little of this paint out of the brush. And if you painted with me before, you know that, that knocking the paint out of the brush just means rubbing it against your paper towel and it removes color. You can see the color that just takes out without having to wash it.
and we'll come up here in our light spot and we'll start working our way down. Now you can see in the middle where we left that that white spot and when we're when we're filling this in or when we're blending this this color in the bottom try to leave as much as that as possible because if it ends up being water it'll serve as like a little sheen of light across the uh, across the water then we'll start at the bottom of the sky and we'll blend ourselves up Real lightly blend across. And just like that, we have sky and water. And we'll knock some more color out of our brush. And we'll hold on to it for now. We won't wash it right now. We're going to take us a one inch brush and, uh, I'm going to load some paint on it just by pulling it through the titanium white. Just going to load a, load some color on it. And uh, you'll see when we, when we get the color on it. Just got a little, little color on it. Titanium white. I want to come up to our sky here with the corner of the brush. And we want to be making little small circles, and we want to keep this brush moving. We don't want to, we don't want to stop and get big globby spots or muddy spots. We just want to come up with little tight circles and just keep the brush moving. That's all you got to do. Just keep that brush moving. And you can use both sides of the brush. And then knock some of that color out. Pick up some more color if you need it. Come back over and you just want to maintain a brighter top than you do bottom. And your bottoms, you, you want to, you kind of want your bottoms to stay flatter I guess is the word um, you know how clouds are kind of flat at the bottom they sometimes sometimes they are sometimes they're not but most of the time a cloud's flat at the bottom well we got that side done we want to come over now and just do us another little just do us another little another little cloud over here that just hanging out We'll run him all the way off the canvas. <coughs> I tell you what, let's do this one too. Let's go ahead and run him off the canvas. I like that. Alright. We'll take our two inch brush now and using just the corner of our two inch brush, we'll come up and we'll very gently blend the bottom of our clouds very gently just the bottom stay on the tops we want them tops to be we want them to be bright and fluffy so we're going to come in now and fluff them up real lightly just pull into them very very lightly fluff them up and then very lightly blend across just set them down into the paint. And that's the beauty of using this thick paint. You want to use a thick paint when you're doing this process. Because it, if you're using a thin paint, that paint's going to want to move all over the canvas. It's going to want to run. It's just not going to stay where you put it. It won't be cooperative at all. Alright, let's knock a little bit of color out of that one inch brush again come back into our white again and we'll come under this cloud and I'll show you 
we're going to push this cloud back by leaving a little of the the blended out area that we blended out we're going to come up and just with our little circles again we're going to leave a little of that color showing and just come in something like that just something real simple like that's all we got to do just that simple don't have to be anything fancy take our two inch brush again come along blend the bottom of that one out real real gentle fluff it up and then lightly set it down into the sky and just like that it's it's like you got a cloud in front of a cloud that just gives it sky depth already putting depth into the sky let me adjust the lights here to see if this helps some to me it just looks too too bright almost like a glare I think that's a little better it looks like it may be a little better okay if y'all will comment and let me know if if y'all seeing this if it was better before or after I adjusted the lights because all I got is a little small monitor here I'm looking at that it's it's not real vivid but I mean it's better than nothing all right, we're going to go ahead and wash these two brushes. And before we dump that one-inch brush into the thinner, I'm going to go ahead and pull a lot of that white paint out just by pulling it out of the bristles because there was, I had it loaded up pretty good there. All right. Now, I guess that raises the question of do we put in mountains? Or not. People have been messaging me about mountains and the one thing that, that keeps coming up is the knife. I mean it's people are having such a hard time with that knife because they say that they can't get the, the angle the angle right when they're trying to trying to work with it and their hands shake. I mean it's just so many different reasons why you can't get that knife to work for you. And it gets to it gets intimidating if you can't get that knife to work. So to do a mountain, you, you don't always have to use the knife. Now, let me show you what I mean. We'll, we'll do a mountain in this one and we won't use the knife. And I hope this helps for everybody that's having problems. We're going to take a filbert brush and what we want to do is load a little paint on that filbert brush. Now it don't take a lot. Just, just load your little paint on both sides of your filbert. And when you come up to your canvas to draw your mountain, and you, you make up your mind where you want your first peak. When you, when you come in coming down with it you know just kind of kind of give your mountain some 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 form some humps and bumps and some jagged edges you don't want to come up here and just draw some ice cream cones upside down but just give yourself give yourself some uh some shape in it kind of like if you if you had the knife I mean, you've, you've seen these guys that 
they can take that knife and pretty much do whatever they want to do with it. It's like part of their hand almost. Now the knife still gives me problems at times, but I've I've used it enough that I've I've gotten better with it. I still need to get a lot better with it than I am, but I have gotten some better. <coughs> but if you take your your filbert brush and just come up and, and give yourself a an outline of a mountain. So something like that. It, it's that's all you really need. And then come in and just start pulling that color down as you as you work it in. Now this may take you a little longer than doing it with a uh, with a knife. But if using a brush helps you, you got all the time in the world. When you're sitting at home painting, if somebody's rushing you, just tell them, look, I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm having fun. And just pull that paint down. The main thing you always want to worry about anytime you're doing a mountain, whether you're doing it with a brush, a knife, or whatever, is that outside line. You want to keep a clean outside line. That's, that's your main focus. And you can come off this mountain. You can come in here and just kick you up another little, another little point and pull it on over. come in here and start pulling the color down and just remember that mountains are angles and if you pull in that angle you got to have a opposite angle and just like that Then on this side, if you wanna, you wanna come in and, and carry it on off to this side. Just drop down. Uh, when you when you're doing your points, try to keep like this point higher than this point. So you want your next point either higher than this point or lower than this point, and that way it gives your it gives you a form. So if this point if you're happy with that height, come over here and do you a little lower one, like right here. You know, just, it, it don't have to be nothing real, real fancy. It, that right there is fine. There are no written, written rules as far as how high your mountains have to be or How tall. All right. Once you get that done, and that's not a bad looking mountain range. I mean, it's it's effective. And the more you work on them with a brush, the better at doing them with a brush you'll get. Now right, we're gonna knock that paint out. We're gonna come back in again, and we're gonna keep pulling the. Uh, paint down and just remember to keep that outside edge as clean as you can so when you get out there and get close to it just be careful and if you go over well it don't you know I mean you're not you're not committing a crime it's just your mouth's gonna grow a little bit which is no big deal If you end up with this whole canvas full of mountains, it's your canvas. You ain't hurt nobody. 
Not like you got documents from the White House in your garage or nothing. Or at your place in Florida. All you done is made a big mountain. <laughs> Uh, all right, just like that. I'll pull that paint out real nice. Then we'll knock a little bit more of that color out. And then come across the bottom here and just stay along the bottom and just kind of just kind of give yourself a little misty effect. And all that's doing is mixing with a little bit of that liquid white that's between the water and the sky. Kick up looks something like a little, little bit of fog back here. Alright, let's wash this brush up quick. Because believe it or not, we're gonna use this brush again. We're gonna use it right now, right quick. <coughs> Excuse me. We're gonna take us a say, uh A little bit of our titanium white on this brush. Now when you're doing this, I hope you can see that. It's it's not a whole lot of paint. But what you want to do is when you come up to your mountain, doing it with a brush, you want to just touch barely touch and let that let that paint pull off your brush just barely pulling off I mean you just barely touching that canvas with that brush barely and if this gives you problems you might can find another brush that you can control a little better. Or you may be able to, to choke up on the brush way up the way up the ferrule and get closer in with it. But the main thing here is just barely touching that canvas. Because you want this, you want this paint to to still break on your on your mountain. About like that. And then come over to your next one. Same thing, just barely pulling down. As close to that outside edge as you can get without creating a, a hangover that makes your mountain grow. <laughs> and just come down. And just barely touching. That's all I'm doing. And I'm doing this with the filbert brush. Now, like I said, if you if you've got a if you've got a round brush that that you feel more comfortable with, by all means, or a square or a, <coughs> an angled brush, whatever whatever brush you're comfortable using doing this, it is not a written law that you have to use that knife to do mountains. It's the reason I think that 
like Bob Ross and, and Bill Alexander and a, and a lot of people today, I think the reason they they use the knife is it's quicker. And once you get once you get the the hang of it, it's it's fairly easy. Just knowing that that what's touching that canvas is is the paint and not the actual knife. I think that's one of the things I was being so hard headed about. Is I just could not get that that concept in my mind that that the knife blade never actually touched. It's just the just the paint. But I was hard headed when it come to that. I was I was not buying into that concept. I think it happened for me by accident that uh, one day I was doing something I don't remember what now, but I accidentally touched the canvas with it, and I mean that, that paint broke. I mean it looked like it looked like a professional done it. I was like, wow. What did I do? And it wasn't what I did, it's what I didn't do. But just like this, all you're doing here is is you're actually painting. You're you're painting uh to make it look like your paint's breaking on the mountain. That's all you're doing. Then we'll go over to our last little peak we got going on over here. We'll do it the same way. All right, we'll hang on to that for a second. Now, once you get that done, what you can do is you can take you a fan brush and you can take that fan brush and you can come up and lay it up here and just barely lay it up here and just pull it just barely I mean barely pull it And what that'll do is, is it'll pull that paint over some of the, some of the spots that, that you left in here. And it'll give that mountain a, a softness, but it'll also show the rigidness in it too it's just like that that's i mean to me that's i, I don't see a thing in the world wrong with that i mean and, and a lot of people a lot of people don't do that but i mean it's it's not hurting anything now you got to do your shadows so what you can do is you can come get your little thalo blue now you already got white on your on your uh filbert brush you can take just a just a touch of the Mount Mix color that you were using, and I do use the the Bob Ross Mount Mix color because it's a color that was that you know they it's one color you don't have to mix colors together, and then you want to get you a little white in there, and the color I'm looking for is a real light blue gray color. I don't want it real dark blue. All right, that's about the color I'm looking for. It's now when you're doing your shadows, we're gonna do them the same exact way. You're just gonna come up and just barely start pulling. 
pulling that color. I don't know if you can even see that on the camera. Probably not. That's all right. We'll put a little more blue in it just for the camera's sake. But what I'm doing is I'm going I'm going right up to the right up to the white. And I'm pulling it pulling it down at an opposite angle than what my what my white is. Maybe you can see that a little better. It gives you, it gives you your shadow. We'll come in. We'll do our second one now. Just butt up against your white and pull out in an opposite direction. That way you get that. That light coming over effect, I guess, is, that's, that's not the term. <laughs> but it, it just looks like light is retracting over it if it gets a little of your highlight color in it. I guess highlighting your, your, your shadow, if that makes sense. But just like that. You can pull all your all your blue down, and then on our last one over here, we'll do the same thing. Just like so. And that's that's basically how you do mountains with a with a uh, filbert brush right there. And then you take you another two inch brush after you're done, a clean dry two inch brush, and come up to the bottom and just start tapping your way into it. Just tap up, you know, a little ways. And you're not trying to destroy this. You're just trying to barely diffuse it. And you want to stay the same direction into it as you came down it on both sides. Just barely tapping the bottom of it. Just diffusing a little of it out. And what we're fixing to do now is create that mist that everybody loves having at the bottom of their mountains. Just like so. And then you can lightly come across the bottom and just brush it out. And then very lightly pull it up into the mountain the same direction. And that'll get rid of those brush strokes. And it'll pull that it'll pull that mist up. And you you can almost see your mountain through it. And it just looks like it's sitting there, floating in midair, just covered in a real fine mist. And then you're always stuck with that decision next on, on what type of trees do we want to do. All right. I've got to step away for a minute. So I'm going to put the video on pause. And I will return in just a second.